welcome to episode 9 in our second series on the surnames of Appalachia and the American South. As with the first season, I want to focus on surnames that have been in the country since before the Civil War. As a reminder, the Industrial Revolution in America began in earnest during the Civil War and the Reconstruction Era ended around probably around 1900. The economic explosion that resulted from the expansion of factories and the construction of railroads attracted millions of people to the United States. Since a person my age would likely know the names of double great-grandparents or great-grandparents who had arrived in an American port of entry during that time, there's little need for my work to help them. So today on The Vantage Point, we'll venture back a couple of centuries to see the origins and meanings of six more pre-Civil War family names of Appalachia and the American South. As a reminder, to get a copy of the surname catalog that lists the names and their respective episodes, write to me at vanishpoint22 at gmail.com and I'll send you the list as a PDF attachment. I hope you'll join me. Number one, Clay. Growing up as a kid who liked competitive sports, I was hooked on boxing before I became a fan of football and basketball. I love baseball too, by the way. One of the standout boxers of the 1960s was a slim fellow from Louisville, Kentucky. His name was Cassius Clay, and he fell under the influence of the Nation of Islam, and in 1964, he changed his name to Muhammad Ali. In 2009, as his battle with Parkinson's disease was making him embrace his mortality, he sought out his Irish roots and made a personal visit or trip to County Clare in Ireland. He was greatly touched by the way he was received by the locals. It seems Ali's maternal grandfather was an Irishman named Abe Grady. He immigrated from County Clare and settled in Kentucky, where he met and married a free black woman. They had a daughter named Odessa Lee Grady, and she married Cassius Clay Sr. And as you might guess, they had a son who became one of the world's best boxers of all time. Clay, Ali's birth name, is English and was given to a person who dwelled by a place with a lot of clay. In Ireland, Clay is linguistically an English name, but it seems to have been adopted by some native Irish families like the McAlfey folk. I couldn't find Clay among the traditional surnames of Wales and Scotland, so I'm confident that your line will lead you to England or Ireland. Number two, Wilder. On July 21st, 1768, Jonathan Wilder was born in Alexandria, Virginia. He later married and lived out his life in Sumter, South Carolina. It's kind of unusual for somebody to come into that part of the colonies and then go all the way down to South, South Carolina. But if you're going to go somewhere and if you were involved in commerce or something, that probably made a lot of sense. Because if you went inland, there wasn't much of a cash economy. It was mostly uh, labor and trade sort of uh, economic activities in the backcountry. But anyway, I was glad to find that this surname was among the colonial surnames of, of Virginia because I'm an in-law of the family of Virginia Wilder. She's a successful real estate developer in the Cumberland Gap area. Her main office is in Rose Hill, Virginia, so if you're looking for a home in the Cumberland Gap area, reach out to her and tell her that, well, <laughs> tell her that Barry Van sent you. I'm Hannah's uncle, if she forgets. <laughs> At any rate, Wilder is an old English nickname for uh, which meant wild animal. It could also be German for wild, not surprisingly, because the, uh, the Angles and the Saxons shared uh, common linguistic roots with the Germans. I couldn't find it among the traditional families of Ireland or Scotland, so I'm confident that Wilder is either German or English in origin. Number three, Elliot. Now, folks, I've been blessed to know more than a few people named Elliot in my life. One of the best neighbors I ever had was John and Lindsay Elliott. We lived next door to each other for nearly a decade in Corbin, Kentucky. Members of John Elliott's family uh, have been in the country since colonial times. Isaac Elliott was born in Perquimian, North Carolina. And I hope I'm saying that correctly, but uh, maybe somebody from North Carolina correct me on that one. Uh, Perquimian? Perquimians? Sorry about that if I missed it up. But anyway, he was born in uh, 1731. Now, the surname Elliot originated in France and came to the Isles with the Normans in 1066. Elliot began its existence as a form of the biblical name Elijah. Its Greek form is Elias. In Ireland, McLeisick claims that the name arrived on the Emerald Isle during the Plantation Era. That's the uh, 17th century. That's not really a surprise to me because Elliot is a border Scottish family name. 
Here in Appalachia, I'm confident that Elliot can be considered Scots-Irish or Scottish. Number four, Preston. <laughs> I better know the meaning of this name. My son's name is Preston. So for me, this surname is a backward slam dunk on an eight-foot goal. Yeah. <laughs> it's an English name for one who dwells at a priest's estate. Beyond that, I have no connection to the surname of Preston. Now, I did find some interesting information that places the family in the South before the Civil War. John Smith Preston was a wealthy planter, soldier, and attorney who became prominent in South Carolina politics, but he began his life in Abington, Virginia in 1809. Now, here's a kicker to the ethnicity of the surname. While the surname is linguistically English, it didn't stay there for long. By the end of the 13th century, it was well established in Ireland. The name has been in Scotland since the 13th century as well. Now this is an interesting situation because this Anglo name spread around the Isles at about the same time the Norman counterparts were spreading around the Isles. You know, they were the political dom they conquered uh, Great Britain in 1066. So remember that they were you know, they were cutting out the Anglo-Saxons, let me put it that way. Whoever was named Preston after the Norman conquest must have been a good politician. I say that because he successfully ingratiated himself into the society of domineering Normans. Number 5 Curry. When I received the request for curry, my mind went straight to an Indian restaurant in Richmond, Kentucky. Knowing that the number of Asian names in the South was small before the Civil War, I shifted my thoughts to a sunny afternoon in Dallas, Texas. The date I was recalling was Friday, November 22, 1963. No doubt some of you know what happened on that sunny day in downtown Dallas, but others may not. President John F. Kennedy was assassinated on that date and in that place. Jesse Edward Curry was the Dallas Chief of Police that day. Chief Curry's family had been in Texas for over a century when JFK was killed. There was an early settlement named Curry's Creek in Kendall County, Texas. It was founded around 1847 and was named for an early settler. Despite sounding like a tasty herb from Asia, Curry is an anglicized form of the Gaelic. <laughs> it means descendant of <laughs> In Scotland, curry can also be a variant of Cory. It's an old and resilient name. Think about this deep ancestral connection. Philip de Curry was granted lands in Ayrshire, Scotland in 1179. By adopting the DE preposition, it seems he clearly admired some elements of French culture that were introduced by Norman nobles. At the end of the day, I'm confident that Curry is a Celtic name that might take your paper trail back to Ireland or Scotland. Number six, Cuddiff or Cunliffe. These are actually two different names, but they're connected, and we'll explore that. The surname Cundiff is an Americanized form of the English Cunliffe. Although I don't have data to back up this observation, the surname's internet footprint makes me think that it's true. Cunliffe is more common in Great Britain than it is in the United States. Cunliffe originated in Lancashire, England in an area called Cunliffe Hill. Now there are Cunliffe folk in the south in the southern United States and perhaps even Appalachia, although I couldn't find any. But I had a hard time finding people that lived here with that name before the Civil War. On the other hand, the American Cundiff line seems to have originated in Virginia. Some sources suggest that Richard Cundiff, who witnessed the sale of some land in Northumberland, Virginia in 1667, is the patriarch of the Cundiff folk in the United States. In either form of the name, their origin is from a green, hilly area known as Cundiff Hill in Lancashire, England. Well, folks, that's about all I have for you today. If you'd like a copy of the list of the surnames that I've covered already, including their publication dates, send me an email at vantagepoint22 at gmail.com and I'll email you the PDF file with the list. I hope you enjoyed the discussion today and will join me again here on The Vantage Point. God bless you and yours. Bye-bye.